thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to bring this important debate before the House tonight. As our country, our ever-increasing energy requirements, and more importantly, how they are met, have long been the source of much debate in governments of all political colours. Hitting the right energy mix is the aim for all high-consumption countries around the world. But, of course, this is harder said than done. Never has this energy mix been more evident at work than in my constituency of Arnest Morn in North Wales. Mm. Wave and solar specialists on Arnest Morn are leading the way in their respective fields, and some of the first offshore wind prototypes were tested on the island. However, this is only part of that all-important energy mix that I mentioned earlier. New nuclear power has the capability to meet this rising demand. And this Conservative Government can be incredibly proud that the UK is the first major economy to pass a net zero emissions law with a carbon target of a net zero by 2050. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Wilbur Nareth on Arnest Mall is critical to achieving this target. The Wilbur Nareth project is key for a number of reasons, and I will touch upon only a few of the most salient points during my remarks tonight. First, Mr. Speaker, I would like to talk about demand. I spoke earlier of the rising demand for electricity. The Committee for Climate Change predict this demand to double. This electricity we produce cannot be any electricity. It must come from clean sources and, of course, it must be dependable. This report introduced the idea of firm power, electricity generation which can be relied upon at all times to supply demand. We cannot ignore our population's ever-increasing requirement for electricity as we decarbonise heat and transport. I give away to my friend. Jim Shaw. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I first of all congratulate the Honourable Lady on bringing this forward on a very vital subject and, and for a, a, a wonderful introduction. Uh, can I uh, ask the Honourable Lady, uh, does she not agree that, as with all things in life, there is a balance that must be struck and that we must balance the provision of energy with a safe and secure foundation? for that provision, and that nuclear power, which I support, whilst well, not the answer to all our needs, is currently necessary. And whilst we look at viable replacements for nuclear energy, we must also take care of nuclear plants to the highest of safety standards. I thank my honourable friend, uh, the member from Strangford, for the intervention. Uh, this technology is proven reactor technology, and it's been delivered four times already. So I agree with you. This, this technology must be proven to be safe. Yeah, yeah. And second, Mr Speaker, I'd like to talk about how nuclear power fits in with decarbonisation both here and in the world at large. Since 1956, nuclear energy has been powering UK homes, doing the heavy, heavy lifting of decarbonisation long before global warming was ever near the political agenda. In the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy's 2019 Digest of UK Energy Statistics, nuclear power provided over 45% of our domestically generated clean power. However, over this next decade, all but one of our current fleet is due to come offline. If this capacity is not replaced with nuclear, our emissions will go up. Mm -hmm. Countries like Germany have tried to decarbonise by shutting down their nuclear power stations, opening cast, open cast lignite coal mines, the dirtiest form of coal possible and using that to keep the lights on when their wind and solar fleet is not generating enough electricity. Their long-term solution is to pipe in gas from Russia, which is still a polluting fossil fuel. The Nord Stream 2 project risks Germany becoming too dependent on gas from Russia, yeah. and this is at a time when the world's political instabilities risk supply cut-off. This would not be an appropriate course of action for us to take. If we were to exclude nuclear in the UK, we would need to install 478 gigawatts of capacity, compared to just between 70 to 80 gigawatts in a balanced mix. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 2018 concluded, not only is it more difficult to reach net zero without nuclear, it is also significantly more expensive. Last, but most importantly, for my constituents on Arnest Morn, the economic benefits are clear. As a government, we promised our voters in areas like mine that they would not be forgotten any longer. Would my right give way? I give way. I'd like to thank my honourable friend. Um, I, 
I just wanted to uh, emphasise the points about economic benefits. There's an arc that travels from Anglesey all the way up to Sellafield, um, with South Ribble and, and Mr Speaker's own patch of Chorley very much at the heart of it, and the amount of high-skilled, technical, brilliant engineers that we have in that arc. It's not unusual to um, live in Warrington and work in Anglesey one day and Sellafield the next, and BAA Systems in Barrow the next. It's economically vital for the north of Wales and the north-west of England. Does she agree? I would like to thank my honourable friend from South Ribble. Uh, she makes a very, 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 very clear point about the nuclear arc and how this is going to benefit so many more people than not just the people uh, on Arnis Mon, but the people throughout Wales. And this, this nuclear arc is going to be very, very important. Can I just? Yes. Thank you. My constituents deserve jobs, skilled employment, and investment to reduce dependency on the instability of seasonal tourism. Many of my constituents tell me that they are worried about the future of the Welsh language as our young people leave the island to cities across Wales and the north of England to gain meaningful employment. Once operational, Wilver will create up to 850 permanent jobs with 8,500 jobs at the peak of construction, <laughs> many of which would be highly skilled roles and training opportunities. We simply must turn the employment situation around on Anglesey and demonstrate that this government is on the side of those who want to work hard and get on in life. There would also be thousands more jobs in the supply chain beyond the island in North Wales. Wilbur would undoubtedly see a multi-billion pound investment into this region. I thank my honourable member for giving way. She's making some very salient points about the importance of nuclear energy. Contracts from Hinkley Point C to suppliers in Warrington North are worth over £61 million, so many of my constituents will be keenly waiting on the Energy White Paper to see what commitments are made to new nuclear projects that could bring even greater benefits locally. Does the Honourable Member agree with me that the Government should confirm the date that this White Paper will be released to give the 3,500 people employed in the civil nuclear industry in my constituency certainty over their futures? I thank, my honourable, I thank my honourable friend from Warrington North, and I'd like to thank you for the intervention. And I would also thank that all the people that work so hard in Sellafield on uh, research in nuclear. And yes, uh, one of my asks for the minister will be in terms of uh, the timescale for getting the, uh, the white paper. If this project does not go ahead, these talented people will inevitably look further afield for work, and we cannot and we must not allow North Wales to lose out. Mm -hmm. Even so, it is not the North alone which would lose out. Estimates put the wider benefit to Wales as a whole at around £5.7 billion. And moreover, after the plant begins to generate electricity, it is estimated that the contribution could be nearly £87 million in gross value added each year of its operation. And as a scientist, Mr Speaker, I understand that these are not insignificant numbers. But even if we all agree that as part of the energy mix, nuclear power is the way forward, why Wilver? Why Arnest Morn? Wilver is, Mr Speaker, hands down the best nuclear new build site in the UK. The local community on the island understand nuclear energy, having seen firsthand the benefits of the original Magnox station. And there is a large amount of support for the project locally. It is encouraging that, despite many major political differences, there is a cross party support for this project with senior figures from both Labour and Plaid Cymru backing the development. The Wilbur project is all but ready to progress into construction. It is based on proven reactor technology, which has been delivered four times, on time and on budget, in Japan, okay. as elements of the design are based on modular construction. The advanced boiling water reactor has already been put through the UK nuclear regulator's generic design assessment, a process which took nearly five years, and the development consent order is expecting a decision from my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State, at the end of March this year. If the process had to be restarted with a different development, we are looking at the very least another four to five years of delay. So much of the groundwork has already been done. Why would we waste this opportunity? Why would we waste more time? Financing the project through a model such as the regulated asset base will ensure that this project is funded and started as soon as possible. I would like to know when the Government intends to respond to the consultation responses on adopting such a financing model for new nuclear. I give way. Thank you. I thank the Honourable Member for giving way, uh, and I share the Honourable Member's enthusiasm for uh, AMR and SMR 
uh, future provision, particularly from the perspective of particle and as co-chair of the APPG for nuclear. But the important point for me is also the money uh, that's generated into the local economy in Hartlepool is, is roughly £10 million into the local economy and, and 500 jobs. Uh, but would you agree with me that uh, the companies such as EDF that run our nuclear power stations are also wisely investing in green alternative provision as well? And therefore, nuclear is effectively a bridge to that future. I'd like to thank my honourable friend, and absolutely, this is a balanced approach. We need to have a balanced approach to our energy so that we can achieve this 2050 target. I would also like to um, ask this government, have they considered any robust alternatives to the RAB financing model? And could I also please ask the Minister con to confirm when the government will be publishing the energy white paper? Mr Speaker, in conclusion, this project is the only way forward to ensure we can meet our 2050 carbon target, our target on decarbonisation. It renews the UK's infrastructure, it drives economic growth in the regions, boosts our manufacturing and construction sectors, and strengthens our links with key Tier 1 non-EU partners, a vital source of investment and collaboration now we've left the European Union. But, Mr Speaker, most of importantly of all, this Government and our message is all about people. People that put their trust in this Government to deliver. Our Prime Minister promised colossal new investments in infrastructure, in science, using our incredible technological advances to make this country the cleanest, greenest on earth, with the most far-reaching environmental programme. People and their priorities were at the heart of our successful election to Government. Now we must deliver. We must deliver across the UK and particularly to constituencies like mine, Arnis Morn. Let's unite this country. Let's spread opportunity to every corner of the UK with superb education, superb infrastructure and technology. And it is the people of Arnis Morn who will benefit most from Wilver. Together we can realise the potential of Anglesey as the energy island and be able to share in the opportunity and ambition to succeed in life that so many neighbouring areas have come to expect as a given. Mm. Mr Speaker, I therefore urge the Government and the Minister to not forget about people when making the decision about the future of nuclear power and, the, and Wilbur Nerith specifically. The people of Arnest Morn and North Wales are looking to us to change their lives and give them hope and opportunity. In the words of the Prime Minister the day after the election, <coughs> those people who voted for us want change. We cannot and we must not let them down. Minister Nadim Sahal. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And uh, I'd like to first congratulate uh, my honourable friend uh, for not only securing this evening's debate, but also on her fantastic recent election uh, result. And I want to uh, thank uh, the, num the colleagues who have made interventions here uh, tonight, uh, the member for Strangford, uh, the member for South, Ribble, Warrington North and, of course, Hartlepool. Uh, the Prime Minister at the uh, Cabinet in Sunderland met an apprentice um, from Hartlepool uh, that day. And, of course, uh, just a point to the member from South, Ribble, uh, it's not uh, just about apprentices, I think. Uh, uh, it's also about skilled workers across all of the country, including in the North West Ark, dating all the way back, Mr Speaker, to 1956. Um, before you were born, quite right, sir. It has been over three decades, uh, Mr Speaker, since uh, uh, Annas Morn uh, elected a Conservative Member of Parliament, and I look forward to working with her over the coming years to ensure that this Government delivers for the people of her constituency and, of course, across the entire region of North Wales. Uh, I am pleased that uh, my hon. Friend has raised this important issue of nuclear energy, and I am eager to talk uh, to her this evening and to the House about the huge number of benefits that the UK expects to receive as a result of the Government's commitment uh, to the sector. I am very grateful to my um, right hon. Friend, the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, who takes an eager interest as well uh, in nuclear power, uh, not only because of her own uh, uh, constituency and constituents' needs, but also uh, of the national well-being uh, of uh, the energy sector. New nuclear is likely to have a significant 
uh, role uh, to play in reducing greenhouse gas emissions to net, <coughs> to net zero by 2050. In September of 2016, we gave the go-ahead to the first new nuclear power station in a generation at Hinkley Point C, and in June of 2018, we committed £200 million through our landmark nuclear sector deal, which includes millions of pounds for advanced nuclear technologies. This government also understands the important role that nuclear plays and will continue uh, to play in our economy. It includes ensuring that local and national uh, benefits are realised, whether that be through increased employment opportunities or uh, improvements in skills. On the 27th of June of uh, last year, the UK Government set a legally binding target to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions from across the whole of the UK economy by uh, 2050, as my honourable friend has reminded us. Uh, we were the first major economy in the world to legislate for net zero, and we want to deliver our commitments in a way that maximises uh, the economic benefits of the transition to net zero, followed by France and followed by uh, the rest of the EU. Between 1990 and 2017, we reduced emissions by more than 40 per cent, whilst at the same time growing our economy by over two-thirds. Decarbonising our economy faster than any other G20 country. A net zero target requires us to build on this progress by transforming the whole of our economy and, of course, changing culture within our society, our homes, our transport, our business, and how we generate and use energy. I would like to thank my honourable friend for raising uh, the energy white paper in her speech, as it will form a key part of our journey to net zero. In answer to her question regarding publication date, I can uh, inform her that the Secretary of State has stated that she intends to publish uh, our energy white paper in the first quarter of this year, 2020. This will set out, I believe, a clear and decisive strategy a strategic approach, dare I say, to decarbonising energy, driving up clean growth opportunities and demonstrating international leadership in the build-up to COP26 at the end of this year, which I'm sure we are all delighted to say that it is being hosted in the great Scottish city of Glasgow. This is not just good for the environment, Mr Speaker. It is good business. It is already abundantly clear, however, that a substantial increase in low-carbon generation will be needed to reach net zero by 2050. Nuclear will have an important role to play in the UK's future energy mix, providing firm low-carbon power and complementing variable renewable generation. Britain was the world's first civil nuclear nation, and nuclear energy has powered homes and businesses in this country for over 60 years. There are currently 15 nuclear reactors operating at eight sites across the UK, providing a fifth of our electricity. In 2016, this government gave the go-ahead for the first nuclear power station in a generation at Hinkley Point C in Somerset. Once operational, Hinkley will provide 3.2 gigawatts of secure, low-carbon electricity for around 60 years, meeting an estimated 7% of the UK's current electricity requirement. To put this another way, Mr Speaker, it will power nearly six million homes, which is twice as many homes as there are in London. I recently had the pleasure of visiting the Hinkley site, and it was incredible to see the sheer scale of the endeavour that is being undertaken. There has been significant progress at the site, with the developer's recent announcement just last December, that all key milestones for 2019 have been achieved. This includes the successful delivery of JO, um, J0, I should say, uh, for the first reactor, which uh, marked the point at which the foundations for Unit 1 uh, were complete and the above ground work could commence. It also included the first big lift for Big Carl, who I met 
the world's largest land-based crane uh, with towers that are 250 metres over the site. It can lift in one single lift 5,000 Shire horses or two A380s. Quite a remarkable piece of engineering. On the 18th of December, engineers at Hinkley worked through the night to lift a 170-ton part of the reactor's steel containment liner into place, and it was fantastic to be able to see the results firsthand. During its construction and operation, Hinkley Point C will also provide the local region, as well as the entirety of the UK, with economic benefits. In July of 2018, the Government published the Hinkley Point C Wider Benefit Realisation Plan. This plan, which was produced with support from EDF Energy, sets out how the wider benefit of the project will be delivered. Just as an example, Hinkley Point C is expected to provide over 25,000 new employment opportunities and up to 64% of the value of construction contracts to UK registered companies. I'll give away. Sure, thank you. In the last term of Parliament, Minister, I had an opportunity to meet some of the people that were involved in this, this project, and, and they indicated to me at that time that um, all of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland would benefit from those jobs uh, regionally as well. Can the Minister just confirm that, that, that Northern Ireland will also gain uh, from the construction of, 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 of this particular project? Minister. I'm grateful for uh, my honourable friend's question on that. I'm happy to, in fact, write back to him exactly uh, how uh, much of the benefit actually has gone to uh, businesses in uh, uh, Northern Ireland. Um, a total of almost £4 billion will go into the regional economy over the lifetime of the project, which is composed of around £1.5 billion during construction and around £2.4 billion during operations. Uh, in today's money, uh, of course. Uh, uh, thank the minister. Um, does he does he agree with me that we should not only be looking to replicate established technologies, but use the new nuclear um, base load as an opportunity to innovate and become a world leader in the sector? I, I'm grateful for my honourable friend's intervention. She is absolutely right, and I hope to address uh, that particular point uh, in a few moments in my speech. Um, EDF was, uh, has informed us that Wales is already benefiting uh, from work at the project, with over 1,000 Welsh residents having worked on the project so far. 21 apprentices who were previously employed at Wilver uh, are now working at Hinkley Point C, and over 100 Welsh companies are working on the project with contracts totalling over £150 million going their way. The project is also sourcing more than 200,000 tonnes of Welsh steel from express reinforcements in Neath and large components from Vesco Engineering in Bridgend. I hope these examples, Mr Speaker, go some way in showing that this Government recognises and values the high-skilled nuclear workforce uh, and established supply chain that Wales offers. However, I do understand that talking about successes in Somerset does not diminish the disappointment that North Wales felt upon hearing about the suspension of Wilver Nuclear Power Station. I would like to reassure my honourable friend that we worked extremely hard during negotiations to find a deal that was right for everyone, with government ready to contribute significant investment. We were clear from the outset that any deal that was made represented value for money uh, and was the right one for taxpayers and consumers. Ultimately, though, we were unable to reach such a deal, and Hitachi took the commercial decision to suspend the project. However, Will the site does remain a potential location for new nuclear development, and Hitachi have stated that they are keen to discuss future options for the site with us based on alternative funding models. The Government is committed to looking at alternative funding models that could improve the value for money and reduce the cost of capital of new nuclear projects. As my honourable friend correctly notes, we recently consulted on the regulated asset base, the RAB funding model, as a potential new option that could attract private sector capital at a lower cost 
to consumers. The consultation closed on the 14th of October of last year, and we are currently considering the feedback to inform the best approach to the financing of future nuclear projects. Anusman will always be the energy island, and this Government is proud of the expertise and skills that North Wales brings to the UK civil nuclear sector. In September of last year, we published the Government response to the Welsh Affairs Committee report on the suspension of work on the Wilver nuclear power station. We welcomed the report and our response reiterates our recognition of Wales' world-leading capability across the sector. And I hope, Mr Speaker, I hope that we will be able to continue to build upon the great nuclear history that exists within North Wales. In June of 2018, we launched our landmark nuclear sector deal in uh, Troas Finneth. Uh, as my honourable friend will be aware, the uh, nuclear sector deal comprises a package of measures to support the sector as we develop low-carbon nuclear power and continue to clean up our nuclear legacy. Worth £200 million, as I said, the deal is about government and industry really working in partnership to achieve significant cost reductions across the nuclear sector and ensure it remains competitive. Uh, with other low-carbon technologies. The deal includes a number of commitments to ensure the UK's nuclear sector has a highly skilled and more diverse workforce. I myself recently signed the nuclear sector gender commitment as part of this Government's commitment to the nuclear sector deal target of, and I say this to someone who's clearly had a leadership position women to win, uh, a target of 40% women in nuclear by 2030. We believe that apprenticeships and higher education will be a key component in achieving this goal, and we are working closely with industry and skills bodies through the Nuclear Skills Strategy Group to understand the skill requirements and the potential challenges faced by the sector. The Government also considers that new technologies, uh, and that was the point that the, my hon. Friend, the Member for South Ribble mentioned, uh, could play an important role in supporting our economy and allowing the UK to continue to be a world leader in tackling climate change. That is why our 200 million nuclear sector deal includes millions for advanced nuclear technologies. We believe that both small and advanced modular reactors have a significant potential to support a secure, affordable, decarbonised energy system alongside other low carbon generation. That is why we have awarded £18 million uh, to the low cost nuclear challenge uh, proposed by a Rolls Royce led SMR consortium. The challenge aims to design a working model that could be deployed by as early as 2030. The consortium believes that a UK small modular reactor programme can support up to 40,000 jobs at its peak, with each SMR capable of powering 750,000 homes. To support advanced modular reactors, AMRs, uh, we have committed up to £40 million to re research and development through our AMR competition, uh, the outcome of which will be announced very shortly. Additionally, we have committed up to £26 million for an advanced manufacturing and materials competition and up to £12 million to build regulatory capability, because that's also important, to take future licensing decisions on small and advanced modular reactors in a safe way. I would like to thank my honourable friend once more and a number of colleagues for their interventions and raising this important debate tonight. Nuclear can not only help us along the route to net zero by 2050, but it's also a key part of our economy. In 2018, there were around 89,000 people employed across the UK nuclear workforce and its supply chain. Our nuclear sector deal is looking to develop the skills that the sector needs and build a more diverse workforce. Hinkley Point C will kick-start new nuclear in the UK, providing firm baseload power and energy security for generations to come as we transition to a low-carbon economy. I look forward to working with all colleagues, and especially my uh, new colleagues, uh, to make sure that we ensure we deliver for North Wales and support the energy island. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Order, order.